smoke plumes, a collapsed tower, and destroyed military equipment. These satellite images from private providers appear to show a string of Ukrainian attacks on Snake Island in the Black Sea, just before Russia announced it was withdrawing from the territory. The territory sits in a strategic position for both countries. Russia seized it and appeared to fortify the island to use it as a base in the Black Sea, threatening targets on Ukraine's shores and watching the ports of Odessa, blocking grain exports. For Ukraine, the territory has become a symbol of resistance after the recording of an obscene radio message sent by border guards to the invaders went viral. Since then, Kyiv has put the island on postage stamps and publicized its military operations there in highly edited footage posted on social media. After a number of attacks, Ukraine said it was able to claim it back, also thanks to foreign weapons. Here's how this small island came to play an outsized role in the war. On the first day of Russia's invasion in late February, it seized Snake Island with help from its Moskva warship. This satellite image shows the territory before the war when it hosted a garrison of Ukrainian border guardsmen. Moscow moved towards the territory as part of a wider strategy to control the Black Sea, analysts say. But keeping control of it became a priority when the Moskva was taken down by a pair of Ukrainian missiles on April 14th. These images show the ship just days before it was struck. The vessel, considered one of Moscow's most powerful warships, was being used off the coast of Odessa to provide air and sea capability to Russia's fleet. The striking of Moscow was proof of Ukraine's ability to hit targets in the area and resulted in other Russian vessels moving further offshore. Owning an island like this and being able to put long-range air defense systems on it is a way of, sort of covering that loss. That's Thomas Bullock, an open source intelligence analyst who specializes in tracking and monitoring the Russian military. Other vessels in the Black Sea Fleet do have an air defense capability, but it's more limited in range. As the territory became a focus for Russia, Kyiv began striking back. In May, the Ukrainian military released footage that it said showed a strike on a Russian helicopter. Days later, Ukraine said a drone strike hit more Russian targets on Snake Island. Kyiv used weapons such as the TB-2 Bayraktar, a type of unmanned drone, and the Su-27 fighter jet to inflict significant damage on Russian forces, but it wasn't enough to dislodge them, defense experts say. They attacked the island multiple times, striking it with TB-2 Bayraktars, attacking boats, circling around the island, and then finally leveling all of the buildings on the island with an airstrike from manned Su-27s. Those strikes appeared to damage structures on the territory, Weeks later, they were fortified and Moscow put additional defenses in place. Analysts say a comparison of satellite images from May 12th and June 5th shows that in a matter of weeks, new tent structures have been erected and additional Panzer and Tor anti-aircraft missile systems have been put in place. So we see a large number of trenches that have been dug to protect vehicles from the sides. So it sort of limits even air attack capabilities to a certain extent. But those additional entrenchments did not stop Ukraine from continuing to bombard Russian forces on Snake Island. The Ukrainian military released edited footage that it said showed airstrikes on the territory on June 21st. The Russian defense ministry said it had repelled attacks on the same day. Compared to a few days earlier, patches of burnt vegetation and a collapsed tower were captured in images. A week later, short-range missile systems appeared to be damaged by Kyiv's forces. Ukraine's military commander posted a video appearing to show a Ukrainian self-propelled howitzer, an artillery weapon with a range of more than 25 miles, striking the island. He also thanked foreign partners for weapons assistance. The most recent attacks coincided with the arrival in Ukraine of new long-range weapons, HIMARS and Harpoon missiles, sent by the U.S. and its allies. There's no indication that Ukraine used those weapons on Snake Island, but analysts say the delivery itself could have been a factor in Russia's decision to retreat. Russia didn't immediately respond to a request for comment. Ukraine declined to comment on whether newly sent U.S. weapons were used in the strikes. The contest over Snake Island is one battle that played out in the wider war in Ukraine, where equipment losses and casualties are mounting. The levels of equipment loss we're seeing and the manpower losses we're seeing is just it's fractional compared to places like the Donbass. Moscow's troops are pushing to expand and consolidate areas they hold across large parts of eastern Ukraine. Moscow has steadily gained ground by using its advantage of heavy weapons, analysts say. Still, the loss of Snake Island is a strategic blow as the war grinds on.